Hi, Shane here, and what I want to go over today is how you can do some core engagement exercises if you can't get down to the floor. So either you're pregnant and you've been advised not to lie on your back, maybe you have some mobility stuff that's limiting you getting down to the floor, or you want to try and fit something in, you know, maybe at work, maybe while you're doing something at home, and getting onto the floor isn't just... It isn't uh, accessible or easy for you to do. So these two things are to be used against the wall. Um, both are core stabilization exercises. For both of them, I am barefoot currently. Um, and I'm just wiping off my feet because they're a little bit slick. So you want to make sure that your feet aren't slippery. And this can be done in work clothes. It can be done in anything. I'm not really in exercise clothes right now, but I'm in a demo like this. So for the first one, we're essentially going into a wall plank. Okay. So you're going to go against the wall so your elbows are against the wall. You're going to step out from the wall. Okay. You're going to use that breath, that deep core um, exhalation through the pursed lips so you're breathing in. Exhale. And as you exhale, everything is just coming together and knitting together. Um, that's the breath we're going to be using. So we're going to start with the breath and then we're going to do the action. So you're in the plank position. Breathe in. Exhale. And you're going to lift the one leg off of the floor. You don't have to get your knee up to like 90 degrees or anything. We're just adding. The load of the, the weight to engage the core a little bit more. Now, I'm going to show you a compensated version with my back to you. And then we'll go over it afterwards. So hopefully this line helps. So if you notice in each of those, the hip on the opposite side, um, the hip dropped on the side I was lifting as my weight transferred to the opposite side. So we want to try and avoid that. Keep the pelvis stable. Keep the hip stable so that when you lift that leg, the core is supporting and keeping the pelvis stable. And so if you felt like the first time you tried it, it was super easy, this is probably why. Okay, so there should have been, you should have noticed a difference there with that green line on my pants. Should have stayed relatively immobile. For the first time, there was some shifting. There was a wave in that. <clears throat> okay, the next one is a wall squat. So we're going to come into the wall. For this one, I need to go up this a little bit. <clears throat> I can't see my head at all. That's okay. So you don't want to round your lower back against the wall like this and tuck the pelvis. You want that sacrum to be against the wall so you have a little bit of the space there. Now my feet are sweaty um, on the surface and it's slipping. So what you're going to do is breathe in, exhale, and lift that leg, okay? The reason why I'm mentioning the slippage is because that makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, so you want to ideally not be on a slippy surface like I am right now. Breathe in. Exhale and lift. So I went a little longer on the second leg with my exhalation because I knew early on if I did it, I wasn't stable enough. The foot was slipping, I hadn't engaged enough of my core. 
and I want to avoid this kind of this where the pelvis drops to the side of the weighted one and this juts out as a way to kind of balance the load ahead above. So do it one more time. Breathe in. Again, my feet are a little bit slippy. Um, another cheat or way to make it easier would be to brace your upper body against the wall, right? So ideally, the upper body is relaxed so that you're really transferring the work to the core. All right, any questions, let me know.